In studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Don't uh, freak out your uh, your computer or your television screen isn't malfunctioning. Bill moved at an angle to accommodate the people in the room. So his background is a little bit different. I, sometimes people get thrown off because they're used to a certain thing, Bill. The background doesn't bother me. I'm just looking at those lovely cookies that's sitting right, right, <laughs> right beside you. You're, you're near a champion chef here this I morning, am, so you've got to be careful. Also, Mr. John Doyle, who will have to excuse himself in about an hour to go to an appointment. But, uh, you know, having John 75% of the time is like having most people 125% of the time. So it all balances out to 100, John. There's, thank you. There's truth to that. <laughs> Whatever you say, <laughs> you're welcome. I know you were told no math would be involved in your appearance this morning, but I apparently... Well, that's not math. That's arithmetic, but I'm still not good at it. Very, very picky Yoon with that differential. <laughs> hey, in studio with us right now from Blue Ridge, we've got Dr. Pete Chekovich. Dr. Pete, good to see you again. It's a pleasure to be here. Belly on up to the microphone pleasure so everybody can hear here. you there. There you go. Very nice. How's no that? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Leslie C. Leslie, you can slide good it Good morning. <laughs> and champion chef Steve Weiss. Steve, good to see you Hello. too. Thanks for having me. Now, we've got some culinary delights from Steve as well. And uh, in this box, Steve, is this looks like uh, chocolate yes. is involved. Yeah, so we have uh, we have some bar cookies in there, uh, brownies, and uh, scones, I believe, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of, there's a big variety of, of edible product in there. And then over here, this is this is actually has steam in the top of it, too. What, what, what yeah, do you have so there? we have some cinnamon buns in there. Yeah, some some really amazing cinnamon buns. These are yeah, and the students make those. I mean, we we love making those. We sell, you we just, sell quite a bit. When did you make them? This morning. This morning. Oh my goodness! Just came out. The pull pull that microphone right in front <laughs> of you, Steve. There, you can slide it. The box is steaming, so it just came out of the oven. Yeah, you can literally see the steam on that. Doyle said that he'll if he I'm not gonna if I don't give these to him at nine or nine thirty, he'll stay till ten to make sure he gets to eat it <laughs> at ten instead too. So, uh, Dr. Pete, first I want to start with you, if you don't mind, and we want to sure. ask you about the financial health of Blue Ridge. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we've heard, uh, obviously, the reports around the state, different universities and colleges are having trouble with money this year. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a real shame about Alderson Broadus. I read about that mm -hmm. uh, online, and uh, the Ernest Hemingway quote, I think, is the most appropriate one, that you go bankrupt slowly and then all of a sudden very quickly. And that's exactly what happened. And it's a shame for those students. But I think that, um, you know, Chancellor Tucker has put some things in place to help the students uh, finish what they want to do in terms of their educational programs. But it's a real yeah. it's a real shame. Um, there were um, they've been around a long time and it's uh, it's going to be a mist in that in that in that vicinity, in that region. Um, Blue Ridge is, on the other hand, uh, doing pretty well. Um, we have good cash cash balance. Um, we did get a little bit of a surprise this year with PEIA, the insurance company that uh, does our health care. Uh, we got about a $300,000 tab at the after the session was over uh, that we had to come up with. So it's made a little bit of a, uh, a monk, throwing a monkey wrench into our plans a little bit, but we're going to we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through there. Uh, our enrollment, I think Leslie can talk about our enrollment for fall. Can we go back to the PEIA for um, a moment? Yes, yes, sure. Was that as a result of some of the legislative changes that were made with PEIA, or was that part of a normal increase that happens? On a um, regular it, that's not part of a normal increase. Mm -hmm. uh, the normal increase would have been a lot less than that. Uh, the individuals who are on the program um, had an offset to their salaries to, to make up for the cost. However, the colleges were not given an offset, um, and and it uh, ran to be about three hundred thousand dollars for us. And I can only imagine what it's doing to a college that has um, more employees, like Shepherd or WVU. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big tab uh, for them to have to come up with. That's interesting. Yeah, and sometimes the legislature will do that when it comes to salary increases. They will say, "Okay, uh, all state employees get X amount of increase." But anyone working in higher ed, uh, either all or a much larger portion of your salary increase has to come out of the high to the base budget of the institution, and they d and they don't give extra money into the base budget to cover that. Yeah, and it's almost a um, it, it's a it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle because um, colleges in uh, at the state level anywhere are sometimes not funded for all their employees, and so they have to take tuition and fee money which comes off the back of the students. At Blue Ridge, it's probably about a 60-40 split with 60% of our folks on state allocation, 40% on tuition and fee. And so when you hear about a 5% increase, mm -hmm. that's only 
for the state allocated folks. Uh, the other 5% has to come out for the other folks that aren't on state allocation. And this, of course, students. drives increases in tuition and fees. Absolutely. Because you, you have to be able to balance your budget. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've, done, you've worked very hard to keep the tuition down. Yes. You had to have an increase, but a very, very small increase. Is that correct? Yes. For yeah. this coming year. This we, coming year. It's the first exactly. one we've had yeah. in about four years, yeah. I think. Yeah. And the same thing with the fees, because that's where a lot of the funds come in that's not identified up front. Uh, me not identified as tuition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. the, when, you, when you hear the cost of going, yeah. the tuition is yeah. this much. Well, there's lots of other fees like lab fees, yeah. program fees, parking fees, which we don't have. Uh, and we try to keep that list as pared back as possible because it's almost impossible for a parent to understand the total cost, you know, when you throw in things like uh, programmatic fees, uh, you're in a nursing program, for example, it's very expensive, so we're going to charge you X dollars more. We don't call that tuition. Yeah. So when you look at the tuition for a particular school, that's not included in there. Uh, and then also with a, with a four-year regional institution, you got housing that comes along with it too. And yeah. that's sometimes even more expensive than the tuition. Yeah. Uh, we've had a lot of growth in this area, in the yep. Eastern Panhandle. Uh, but I think a lot of the success we've had in recruiting Procter & Gamble, Mason, and others is due to Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge. Right. And um, it's, I'd like to compliment you that, that you, you've been very, very aggressive in matching up your training to what is needed by these businesses coming in. Yeah, I think as we talked in our board meeting last week, uh, there was an interesting um, kind of discovery or question by, by one of the members. Um, is it could it be um, accurately described that Blue Ridge responds to a need in the community as opposed to having a supply of something to say take this yeah. and I said that's exactly right that's exactly what we've been doing for more oh, 20 25 years now and it it's not just Blue Ridge that's the reason for the success of it, recruiting it's a it's a team effort mm -hmm. you know our our economic development folks have been wonderful um, we've got good transportation um, both north, south, and east, west. Uh, we have good uh, infrastructure, um, water, sewer, electric, the things that industry needs, gas, uh, to operate. And so um, it's been a combination of things that have come together. But you could have all those other things. If you had a terrible education program, probably would not be as successful. So you're right, and I thank yeah. you for your compliment. And, and a story I've told several times, Pete, but I think it's, uh, it drives the point home. Uh, several years ago, there was a windmill manufacturer that was located in eastern Tennessee, and they were using Berkeley County, I think, as leverage to get a more of a sweetheart deal. But we did not know that. <laughs> uh, but it required very sophisticated remote welding. You were prepared to put, a, put together a program that would satisfy their needs. Needs. And as a consequence, because of your willingness to do this, what had been started as a leverage became fairly competitive. And we stayed with them looking for this very attractive business until the very end, all because you had were offering that and, specialized and, training. Yeah, and, and that, of course, is what community colleges are for. That's what they're for. And for a long time, West Virginia didn't understand that. Nope. And uh, it was a real struggle. To, to get a real community college system in West Virginia Absolutely. To, to, to fill that need in the marketplace. And and we're finally beginning to catch up now as a state. Yep. But we're still I think we're still a little bit behind because we waited so long to do that. Yeah, in some regions we are probably a little bit behind, yeah. yeah. Let me go back to what Rob started with a couple of minutes ago and was at the <clears throat> financial end. Uh, it's my understanding that the state is given some monies for deferred maintenance. Oh, yeah. But both you and also the four-year schools. Right. Will you speak to that, please? Yeah. Um, there, there's some misunderstanding about the amount of money we get. Um, I think there was a publication that came out that said community colleges get a million, four-year colleges get 20 million. Well, we were eligible for a million, but our facility, the one that we own, is fairly new. And so we could come up with about $500,000 of deferred maintenance that is for the capital money to, to be used. And we're going to get about a half million, which is wonderful. I mean, we have air conditioning systems that, you know, will last 10, 12 years mm -hmm. and they're getting ready to be replaced. Yeah. Uh, and coincidentally, we've been in our new building now for 12 years. Mm -hmm. So um, it's time to take a look at some of those 
very expensive pieces of infrastructure for the building, and I think that money's going to come just at the right time. Parking lot, for example, yeah. needs would, to need some work on it. Will you sink hole? The sink hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's been a big, yeah. interesting project, interesting yeah. surprise. That's where Steve puts the students who don't do so well in the baking <laughs> class. The, the food goes in at the sink hole. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and to go back a little bit in history too, Bill, um, your your council and now commission years ago was very, very kind to us um, as a community college moving into, into Martinsburg. Our rental rate, as you recall, was $4 per square foot, including utilities. Mm -hmm. Now, we had about a year or two experience with a for-profit realtor it cost us $12 plus utilities. Had we paid that rate, we would have been out of business overnight. Mm -hmm. The council came along at just the right time and it was a wonderful partnership. Yeah. It is the reason why we're still a uh, vibrant community college uh, and we were able to grow and prosper because we weren't throwing money at a for profit yeah. business. Now the the individual that kind of monitors your uh, your enrollment, the uh, uh, new students coming in, is Leslie C. Yes, it and is. So she tracks very closely with what what we're doing as far as enrollment. Absolutely, every day yeah. we're watching. This is our peak season. August is a tremendously yeah. busy time. And how they're doing compared to COVID, prior to COVID. So prior to COVID, you know, we're coming back. We're not quite where we were in 2019, but the numbers that we're watching right now, this is going to be one of our largest years since. Because this is one of the problems that all the higher education is experiencing now because there was a drop in, in enrollment uh, during the COVID year. Are most schools coming back uh, after COVID? You know, I think each school has its own challenges. And one of the things that we're not having to, to face, <clears throat> we don't have dorms. So we're not having to have a capacity or a hoteling that we have to account for. With COVID, we had to change how we offer classes right we had online we've been accredited for online for for 10 years but we hadn't made that full switch COVID comes along that's now an expectation <laughs> it's it's a requirement post COVID, there are people who still want to be online so for us we're not losing in the dorm and the the facilities and and yeah. that aspect because whether you're <laughs> on campus or not we're able to offer the classes. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the uh, the, the isolation that resulted with COVID. Uh, do you have a sense, and I know uh, there's been, you, you folks have been involved in some studies uh, that how the impact of COVID with interaction. Uh, do you have a sense that the your current students are have adopted and accepted the remote learning uh, and you'll continue in that trend? We will continue with remote learning in and where it's good. We study what classes have the best retention, uh, what classes, obviously like Steve's classes, cannot be done remotely. Uh, you know, you can't bake, well, I mean, I guess you could bake bread in your own home. But, and also EMS uh, and some of the nurses. Right, well, a, know, lot, a lot of the sciences yeah. you have to do, yeah. you know, the lab environment. Although we do have science kits that people can dissect on their kitchen counter. I don't know if that's necessarily something I would choose, but I guarantee you, my, if my wife was listening right now, she would say that is not going on my kitchen. <laughs> you don't want to feed a fetal pig on your counter. Yeah, yeah Leslie, the uh, uh, Bill's right about uh, uh, what, what COVID did to your enrollment. There's something else I think going on too, and I was going to ask you: to, it, does it affect Blue Ridge? And if so, how? The the current generation of people who are of college age is smaller yes. in number than uh, it, the previous generation. And I think that's one of the reasons that higher education around the country is seeing drops in enrollment overall. Now, do you think that has affected Blue Ridge? You know, it hasn't affected us in, in as it has around the state. Other schools around the state are seeing that decline in the population. Berkeley County school systems specifically is the largest in the state. It has like, I think 21,000 students. So we trend, we watch That's that. That's even larger than Kanawha County? 
You know, I'm not sure if that's still current, but in other parts of the state, yeah. for example, like Hardy County, they're having to consolidate schools because they simply don't have the population mm -hmm. to keep it going. We're not, we don't have that here. We have a huge migration in. We have a lot of BNI that draws people here. So Blue Ridge, I think, is immune right now okay. to that. Um, what about in terms of employees, teachers, and those who facilitate the classes? Do you have any trouble filling those positions? I think that's also position dependent as well as what's difficult. We have had to take a hard look at our salaries and really align, you know, a nursing faculty wasn't wasn't uh, too hard to fill because it was, you know, we could hire for like $48,000. Well, a beginning nurse can get $50,000 sign on bonus, $50 an hour. We've had to really adjust our pay to make sure that we're competitive. We want we want industry um, strong staff and faculty teaching our classes, so we have to be industry competitive. Can you set your own pay rates, or does the state tell you what you can pay? We can set our own. We, we can set our own. Yeah, the, we can set our own. W within parameters, if they're staff positions, mm -hmm. faculty, it's completely open and negotiable. That gives you some freedom there. Steve, if I could get you for a second here before we sure. run out of time. First and foremost, sure. the aroma from your baked goods is driving me crazy sitting here <laughs> beside this, but you know that already because you're a champion at this. Oh, uh, we've watched you on TV over the years, too. Do you have anything yeah. else coming up, by the way? Uh, no, you know, my most recent show is, uh, is on Netflix currently. It's uh, called Is It Cake? Uh, so, I mean, that's where you can see me right now. But um, uh, there's always there's – always, uh, uh, programs and and things Master that Chef. yeah there's master chef programs i mean we're, we're always doing that but for right now currently we have outreach to uh to to the community through a master chef program we have two two credit hour or, well it's two hour classes they come in on a saturday or or a certain evening that we uh we we slate and uh it's like being part of a of a of a TV show like a PBS TV show you come in and we have everything set up for you you come in you cook you bake and then you take the products home and hopefully you share the recipes and the products with your family and friends what, what are your program uh, what's most popular with the with the public is it bacon is it type of bacon or is it cooking um, well, what is it? we're seeing a, we're seeing an uptick in in the folks really getting behind the baking uh, yeah. baking is is really popular right now so even in our enrollment currently we have a lot of a lot of students coming in the baking program so but I culinary took, is very I took a too. bread maker class from Steve two weeks ago and I gotta tell you he is a master yeah. it it was wonderful I have so much bread that I had to take home <laughs> it, I had bagels I had focaccia bread I had baguettes I had everything yeah. egg bread it, it was just incredibly interesting okay. and fun I like I've got a little bread machine at home yeah. Yeah. but this takes it to an all different level it's really something well, I have a couple of comments on our commenting page here Julie Poolscamp uh, said we participated in the Blue Ridge taco about your future event last week and there was another one here it is from Jeff Haddocks my wife participated in the pizza making class with Steve the pizza oh, and focaccia yeah. bread they made was delicious yeah fantastic. I had a piece of focaccia bread last night oh fantastic it was good yeah. yeah so that stuff's all all great uh, Stephen a typical year when there aren't extraordinary factors going on how many kids people adults whatever enroll in the culinary classes and complete the program oh i mean even and if you tack in contact contracted training for team building and stuff around the area i mean it's i mean thousands of people come through i mean we 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 you know degree seeking in a program you have about 40 coming in this, yeah this fall. yeah i would say a good a good amount would be 40 uh for this year uh but I mean, we we have so much outreach to the community I mean, we partner with the va hospital uh do training for those folks and mm -hmm. then we have you know, obviously png our partners and clorox so you know so how much time would i have to spend with you to be uh, a person who could go out and then get a job in a restaurant or in whatever factor cooking or baking for people um well i mean it's it's not so much hours it's 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 you know, we have a certificate program that lasts three semesters. Mm -hmm. So typically a, 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 a person can come in and get a certificate in culinary arts or baking and pastry uh, and uh, get out in the community and get an entry-level position. Uh, and that's that's the focus, so getting an entry-level position uh, as soon as you, you graduate with a certificate or a degree program. And we, I would say 99.9% .9 of the students come in and they take the degree pathway. Uh, certificates they'll get after after three semesters, but, but we encourage them to go through because there's advanced classes in the fourth semester that they'll need to really be successful in the industry. 
Do people come into your class and say, hey, you're the guy on TV? Uh, some, yes, sometimes, sometimes. Oh, I do. Yes, sometimes, sometimes, yes. yes. Not so much now, but yeah, back, back in the day, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do. For me, it's, for me it's, not about, it's not about, well, I mean, it's all about winning sometimes, but, but a, lot of, a lot of it for me is more professional development. Mm -hmm. Now, on the yeah. TV shows, you frequently have a partner. Mm -hmm. Have you ever considered having Dr. Pete as your partner? Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I think I would lose. He's a good bread baker. I can, the the I joke can at, him at the school for the first six or seven times, before Steve won, yeah. Yeah. the first six or seven times he was on the air on – we used to call him the biggest loser on television. Yeah, but, yeah. But then he won, and that had to, that had to go away. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I'm afraid I would drag him back down if I were his partner. <laughs> After nice. all the ones that I've done, I had to win one at least. Hey, yeah, well, congratulations, fun. and it was fun watching you. Yeah. You know, win or lose, it didn't matter. It was just cool that you were on TV, yeah. just to be able to see someone local doing that kind of stuff on network. That was awesome. Yep. And uh, it, bl it brings great publicity to Blue Ridge, too, which already has a fine reputation. And, and, and Dr. Pete, as you look into this upcoming year and the year forward, do you anticipate more tuition increases coming or fee increases? Uh, it's, you know, it's a very good question, and it's something that we'll take a look at probably starting in October, November. Uh, we always start planning our budget uh, about that far ahead, six, seven, eight months ahead. And so we'll take a look at the enrollment level. If it's good and uh, we don't get any cuts from the state, yeah. Um, I don't anticipate that we would need to uh, raise tuition. Uh, we try to keep it, as Bill said, as, as um, uh, affordable as possible for, so we can serve many, many students. And also you have very good communication, very good support from the legislators. You, you, you have a very good relationship with them. We do. Yeah. Uh, we do. And, and I really appreciate that. Uh, some things are, you know, out of, out of our control and out of the legislature's control. Uh, but I know we've worked very hard. You know, we used to be really, really badly underfunded. And over the last decade or so, the legislature has made some very good progress mm -hmm. toward closing that gap on a, on a per student funding sure. level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you mentioned the $300,000 increase in the PEIA insurance that caught everybody by surprise. Was there any indication at all from the legislature that you were going to see an increase of that size before and, and, it hit you? Well, it was really murky. Um, there was a lot of talk behind the scenes, I guess. And, and actually, there was an indication that it would not affect the college at one point. And that did not turn out to be the actual truth of the matter. But it, it, that was after the legislative session was over, so there was nothing the legislators could do about it. That uh, just came along at the last minute, or af actually after the last minute. So, do you have any idea if a similar bump will hit you every year going forward? This was not supposed to be that way, but you know, uh, it was no. supposed to be that way this year. Yeah, know? what had happened is for three or four years, the legislature just just kept kicking the problem down the road. That's it, and now. All of a sudden, rather than having a series of gradual increases over two, th three, four, maybe five years, they just said, oh, we're this far behind. We got to bump it up all the way right away. That, right. That's really what happened. That, yeah. And that's kind of like Ernest Hemingway warned us that you go <laughs> yeah. right, gradually and then all of a sudden very quickly. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks so much, all three of you, for coming in today. It was wonderful catching Appreciate up it. with you and getting the information out, too. And uh, please, anytime you got anything you need to get, out on the air let us know we'd be glad to have you oh, we'll again. always bring treats too for you. that was really what i was kind of getting <laughs> <laughs> steve thank you especially yeah, absolutely. very much i know this group is waiting to tear into this uh, before oh, we get to the excellent. break here Please.